in total, 25 billion arm cores have been shipped. These numbers are quite staggering. And so I think they demonstrate that the world is becoming quite connected. But that's good, but we still think there is some way to go. Because there are 6.8 billion people in the world, incredibly, over 5 billion of those don't yet have the internet. About 2.2 billion of them do not have a mobile phone. And even 1.4 billion don't have electricity. And so while we are very pleased and proud at the growth we have seen in communication and connectivity, I think you can see there is still some way to go. Now this connected world is really very complex and very diverse. At one end of the scale we have microcontrollers powering the Internet of Things, costing less than 50 cents. And at the other end of the scale, we have servers and high-end computing, where the chips are costing over $200 to use ARM technology. And the reason is because TVs are becoming connected, and they need the same sort of technology that has been built for mobile connectivity. Now I'm going to give you extra performance over that, it has virtualization to separate the personal and enterprise parts of that uh, functionality. We'll see connectivity to multiple screens, new user interfaces, gesture control and so on becomes possible with this amount of processing power. And then as we move into new applications, they can exist seamlessly swapping between the handset device and the cloud. So I'm chips, and it won't be long before those start making their way into real end product at a development stage. Those of you who know me and have heard me speak before will know that I attribute most of the success of ARM to the ARM connected community. That is what sets ARM apart from the rest of the industry in my view. The ARM connected community continues to grow. It is now over 850 members. These are changing the face of computing. And as you know, Microsoft Windows Next is coming soon, bringing SOCs into the market. So we expect the PC, PC market to carry on growing. It's been relatively stagnant for the last few years. But we think mobile PCs are going to grow. And interestingly, we think the ARM share of those PCs is going to grow significantly. So whereas I said today we have about 15% market share, sorry, I said we have about 10% market share today, by the end of 2011 we believe we will have about 15% of that market share as tablets grow. By 2015, we expect that to be over 50% of the total mobile PC market. And by the way, the mobile PC market is incredibly important in Taiwan, as you know. So I think that underlines just how exciting this change is for Taiwan industry. So now we talk about how the partnership brings choice. As I mentioned, most application processes today in the products you are using are using either Cortex-A8 or Cortex-A9 on the V7A architecture spanning from single core right up to quad core implementations. And from that same technology, we have multiple partners building application processes. And on those application processes, they have multiple operating systems. And so the result is an enormous diversity in the end products. And so even something, a sector such as tablets, has this enormous diversity already, just within a very short space of time. Users, middleware, plugins, and so on, delivering the complete internet as efficiently as they do on traditional PCs. And we now have hundreds of thousands of apps running natively on the ARM architecture. In a very short space of time, an enormous software ecosystem has been built. Um, thank you, PowerPoint. 
Um, we have actual leadership in Android. Android is optimized for ARM. It doesn't say on the slide, it's hidden in white, I'm sorry. But there are 400,000 activations a day. Is that right? Yeah. 400,000 activations a day on Android, on ARM. Hard to imagine how the system keeps up with that, isn't it? Android was written on ARM. It's still optimized for ARM. We continue to work with Google optimizing it. There are now more than 300 certified ARM-powered Android devices on the market, and that number obviously continues to grow. Are peripherals and so on within that base code. And that's all starting to get quite unmanageable. As we move into a new world in the connected PC, I believe there's a great opportunity for those uh, developers to move some of those applications and peripheral development up into the cloud. And I think that'll make a much more um, sustainable solution to this problem of an ever-growing number of peripherals. And so ARM is investing in tools and support for this. We have our development studio called DS5, which is optimized for Linux development. And of course, we have Linaro starting to coalesce Linux on ARM. I'll mention a bit about that in a moment to wake up to the fact that security starts to become a concern. In fact, ARM foresaw this more than 10 years ago. And so we created some technology called TrustZone that we started to build into our microprocessor cores ever since ARM 11. And it was a little bit ahead of its time. The market didn't see the need for it. But I can tell you now the market is seeing the need for this extra security as we start to wake up to the, the power that we now have as we carry around. And how we approach security is a matter that uh, we have been working on for some time, as I said. We see the ARM architecture as the foundation of this, and so Cortex processors with the Trust Zone technology, we believe offers an extremely powerful and uh, effective solution. If you like, you can think of Trust Zone as a hardware firewall within the device between the rich OS and the trusted execution environment. And so our aim here is to have provided the hardware that other people can build the software systems on top of. And these uh, trusted execution environments, at the moment we're working with GMD, with Mobicore and Gemalto. I expect there will be more companies joining that. And uh, it's starting to enable a very interesting uh, level of security that I believe very firmly is going to become a necessary standard. Because as we look forward, as we move up, use our smartphones for payments, for enterprise, even protecting content, all of these things become much, much more important. So ARM Trust Zone is, we believe, a fundamental technology that is going to enable the extra security. As I mentioned, the hardware has been available for some time, but we're now starting to enable the software ecosystem around it. I'd just like to explain where I think we stand on this. We believe firmly that ARM is creating a new ecosystem for servers. And we've been working on this for some time. Ever since 2008, we started our own R&D. In 2009, we invested in a startup company. In 2010, Cortex A15 was announced. Right now, we're at the stage where companies are building experimental servers to demonstrate the total cost of ownership. And the reason we think this is important is because as cloud computing grows, it is becoming very apparent that the amount of energy wasted in servers is limiting their growth. And so everyone is appreciating that we need to have lower power servers as server capacity grows. And we believe firmly that ARM technology is appropriate in a large part of that server market in the end. But it's going to take time for us to get the complete ecosystem around it. 
And therefore, we have to enable some hardware in order to build and enable all of this software environment. Most importantly, as partners, right across the market, whether that is smartphones, mobiles, digital TV, connected TV, servers, desktops. Already today, huge shipments in many of those markets. Our prediction for 2015 is that uh, those are going to become enormous markets. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the microcontroller market is, the, is going to be the biggest market of all. I haven't majored on that this morning because for most of the products that you and I are interested in in Computex, microcontrollers don't figure very highly. But I can tell you, as we move into the Internet of Things, and almost every device we see becomes connected and becomes electronic, it's ARM-based microcontrollers that are going to have a large part of that market. And so we believe the microcontroller market is going to grow to be the biggest single volume product, if you like, the DARM is shipping in future years. And we roll all that up, and our prediction is that by 2020, which is only nine years away, there will, there will be about 150 billion ARM chips in the world by then. Through the supply chain, from the ARM processor IP, right through the semiconductor companies using Foundry, through to the ODMs and OEMs, through distribution, through to the end user, many, many people are touched by this technology and are able to add value to it and therefore to make their own profit. And that is what we believe ARM enables, the key technologies that are necessary. ARM has been working on those key technologies with companies like Adobe for some time. And those are now available in the market. At the bottom of the market, at not the bottom of the market, at the bottom of this, um, this stack, if you like, a lot of products, of course, are using Linux. And Linux has been very fragmented. There are many different versions of Linux. And that is why, exactly a year ago, in this very room, we launched a new company, or we helped launch a new company called Linaro. Some of you were here then, I know. Linaro is a joint venture company, and ARM is one of the members. So ARM started it, but ARM is no longer the controlling mem uh, member. Linaro is now a separate company. And after I finished here, I'm very pleased uh, that uh, Linaro and uh, George Gray, CEO of Linaro, will be giving you a talk about that. Currently on the market that Andrew Arm is quite successful with tablet smartphones, so on and so forth, but he would like to learn that like Chrome also and also uh, Chromebook and Smartbook. And Smartbook that part. And is there any strategy or Arm has any plan that uh, that can be also success uh, equivalent successful on that sector as well? So, so Chrome OS is another of these sort of new operating systems, if you like. Um, Google uh, brought it out first on the x86 architecture, but they said it would be available in, during 2011 on the ARM architecture. Uh, we still believe that will be true. But again, just like with Microsoft, I can't announce what Google's products are. Um, I know they are here at Computex. Again, I'm encourage <coughs> you to, to ask them. But yes, we believe that Chrome OS will be available on ARM. You need new technologies at each node, or not at every node, but as, as you go down. If you remember at 130 nanometer, the, the world moved to copper from aluminium, and there was a big fuss about that. Well, we've kind of forgotten about that now. Everybody uses copper, of course. Um, around about the 40 nanometer node, there was all this discussion and talk about high K metal gate. Um, was it first gate first or gate last? Nobody cares. The fact is, pretty much all um, processes below 40 nanometer are now using high K metal gate technologies. Again, we're not really talking about that. And so, at some point in the future, FinFETs are probably going to become normal. Okay? Most of our partners are saying it'll come in at the sort of uh, 14 nanometer node rather than the 20 nanometer node. But I don't believe that's a, a huge factor either way. Uh, eventually it will come in, but 
I believe firmly um, the partners we work with have demonstrated that they can be pretty technologically compatible and um, competitive um, in the time frame when you need it. It's important to remember there's a difference between when you first bring out a process, innovation, which you bring in at the high end, and when you actually bring it in in the mobile space, which is such high volume. And so when you look at that very high volume space that ARM technology tends to get used in, um, if, if you look at what Intel claim is their lead, it's not actually as great as their claim. 